Welcome back, Heat Seekers. It is week four, and we are here with your week four wide receiver tiers. Everything's on fire. Everything's on fire. Everything's on fire. As always, thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, all the things you guys do to help make this channel amazing. Uh, it's all because of you guys, and we thank you so much. With that being said, let's get to it. Here is your wide receiver tiers for week four slate of games. What we're going to do is just like last time, a little shorter though. We're going to talk through some of the, 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 the interesting names in, on these tiers and we're going to have a little fun with it. But as always, drop your comments below. Any guys we missed that you think need to be on here other than Julio, he's on here this time. Let us know in the comments below. And with that being said, Craig, what happened in the wide receiver one overall tier that was a surprise to you? And give me your thoughts on it. So, I mean, there's two sort of surprises for me. One, you know, when we're putting these together as a team, uh, compared to what we had seen prior weeks, Mike Williams being in the wide receiver one overall, he's certainly earned it, as I believe he's the number two wide receiver in PPR year to date. So a bit of a surprise if you're talking about preseason, but it makes sense with what's going on here. The other one, um, as a Dallas fan, it surprised me that, Renaf said Murray Cooper is still in the wide receiver one overall. Certainly there's that explosiveness of that offense where he can be. Um, it's just been a little bit, you know, inconsistent for him to start the year. And I sort of view him and Cooper about similar. But uh, overall, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot of surprises in the wide receiver one overall for me. How about you? Yeah, the, you know, the interesting thing is, is, the Chargers offense is supporting both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. I mean, they're both over 30 targets so far this year. Um, and, and this offense is really high powered. So I think, you know, until they show us otherwise, Mike Williams is healthy. He's doing what we thought he should do coming out of Clemson all those years ago. Uh, good quarterback. Everything's been been working well for them. So it's it's an exciting time to be a Mike Williams owner because, you know, if you're in dynasty, this is the time to, to cash out. If you're not competing and in a redraft format, you just keep starting them until otherwise. And you probably drafted him late enough that this is a huge return on the investment. So it's a good time. Uh, other than that, no, I mean, that, it all makes sense. Amari Cooper, I know is it's, it, you know, that offense is very high powered and, and CD lamb could quickly move into the wide receiver one overall on a weekly basis, just because of what he's been doing. But you know, Mark Cooper still the, the top option in that passing offense. So I feel good about him as a wide receiver one overall, but you know, that could change in a few weeks. There's a lot going on in fantasy. All right. So top six wide receiver, a lot of names that we're expecting really nothing surprising here. Uh, Brandon cooks has been a name that's been, that people have been, surprised about but he just continues to produce no matter who the quarterback is in this top six wide receiver tier you know is there anything that stands out as surprising or anybody that you thought really shouldn't be here yeah i, I find it funny that you know we talked about the two um chargers receivers up at the top and of course there's the two from seattle too but then we got three from tampa bay and that top six wide receiver and you know they do have that potential upside you know it all just depends on who's healthy for a week who brady decides is going to be the guy or giving what the coverage to, or taking what the coverage gives him rather um you know it could be any of those guys and i do think they eat into each other a little bit uh, but if we're talking about upside for these which is what we're talking about when we're making these yeah i think it makes sense debo we saw it week one but i think it'll be interesting to see what's that offense going to look like this year because it just hasn't been the same since that first big game um against the Falcons, was it? No, they didn't play the Falcons. I don't remember my week to week <laughs> here. Well, and, and the interesting thing I want to Detroit, make sure that, sorry, 49ers yes, played Detroit week yeah, one. Yeah, they played Detroit week one. Um, you know, with Antonio Brown, we have him here, but let's keep an eye on what that injury report for week four looks like. We know he was out week three against the Rams. Uh, so, you know, this is, this is very much, if everybody's healthy and playing, this is where we project these guys to finish out as or where we think they're going to finish out as, but, you know, as always keep an eye on the injury report, you know, and, and come here Sunday mornings and talk with Bryce and Rick and the guys about, you know, his health and where, if you should be starting him or not, because, you know, uh, Tampa Bay has a lot of great offensive weapons and Antonio Brown is a good one if he's on the field, but if he's hurt still or, or not playing, you know, that's a problem. 
Uh, okay. So other than that, you know, pretty straightforward. How do you feel about Calvin Ridley? That's one I thought was interesting that we still have kind of high end hopes for and thoughts on what, where are you at with him? Yeah. So, I mean, he's the alpha receiver there now with Julio gone, of course, to the Titans. I think it's just going to be a matter of what is that team going to be able to do week in and week out. And I think it's hard to say because that offensive line is not great. And that team, I think there'll be enough garbage time where, you know, that upside where we have him makes sense. Um, And Washington has given up points this year. Um, You know, Atlanta is not Buffalo, but, you know, they gave up points to the Giants too. You know, that defense just has not shown what we think that they were capable of preseason. So Ridley there, I, I think he still deserves to be there. He can still easily be a top six with, you know, it's basically him and Pitts is the only sort of consistent target options at, you know, wide receiver tight end. Of course, Patterson is there. He's a you know wide receiver running back, depending on where you're working off of, but he's clearly the alpha and I don't see them shutting down Atlanta this week. So I absolutely agree. All right. So you see there, we got CD Calvin, DJ, Brandon, Adam Thielen, Debo, Mike Evans, Godwin, Terry McLaurin, Antonio, but wide receiver ones. Now there's some more interesting names in this conversation. Some guys who've been up and down, uh, some guys who, you know, I mean, even with like Julio Jones, they were pulling him out late in the game when it was still close. And, you know, and it sounded like based on the broadcast that they were kind of resting him uh, for a drive here and there, but he was in and out. So you have to wonder how he's feeling, how he's doing, what the team is even doing. Um, Chase Claypool, that offense has been up and down, been a bit of a mess. Najee Harris has been producing, but it's all over the place. You know, Marvin Jones is the true top option with Jacksonville and, you know, and there, and there really isn't the next close, like he's kind of been the man. And then these other guys, I mean, Odell came back, had a, had a solid week against the bears uh, as a, as his first week back, but this is a fun lineup of, of wide receiver one type players. And then there's Marquise Brown, which feels like a boom bust type guy on a week in and week out basis. So when you're looking at this tier, how do you feel about these guys? And, and is there one that you feel more confidently about or one that you feel less confidently about like me and Marquise Brown? The one I feel less confident about, honestly, is Chase Claypool. I think the only reason he really got this high up, because Ben has been atrocious this year, um, and that offense is just not what people had hoped with the sort of weapons that they have in it that goes back to the offensive line and Ben. But just by sheer force of volume, with him and Najee Harris sort of being the last men standing of you know guys that they're using a lot of at this point, yeah, I think he fits up there just with that pure upside. His first two weeks were down, but then with Johnson out, Juju exited early. You know, he had almost 19 points. Um, so, you know, that that fits for a week. Um, Julio, we're going to have to see. Are they going to continue to rest him through series? If A.J. Brown is gone, I think they're going to have to play him more. Is they, they're they going to need an alpha receiver out there to take away from teams stacking the box against Derrick Henry and completely shutting down that offense. But the rest of those guys, I think, fit there, and we've seen it from them this year where I, I like it. How about you? Yeah, I think Jamar Chase and Cortland Sutton, I feel like any given week uh, could go into the top six category. Like if we are looking at things uh, on a week-to-week basis, which we are, you know, I love what Chase has been doing with Joe Burrow, and Sutton is a target hog who does a great job when he gets the ball. Like he does, doesn't drop a lot. And he does a good job with the ball at yards after catch kind of stuff. So those two guys, I feel like are locks every week as, as probably wide receiver ones or higher. And then the other ones are all really good players, but there's always question marks. You know, they kept showing graphics during the bears game of Odell's, you know, catch rate and and Baker's success rate with Odell in the lineup. And it's just not been great. Uh, So it's Odell's always Odell and Marquise and Chase Claypool on this wide receiver one list are guys where, if I have better options, I would probably consider them because you never you never can tell if you can trust them. Uh, obviously, you probably don't have better options, but it's always so hard to trust them. Where Jamar, Cortland, and Julio are guys were like, I feel good about putting them in my lineup, even with Julio missing drives here and there. So uh, I think it's I think they all have pretty solid matchups this week where they should all produce wide receiver one, which is why we have them here, but. You know, those are the things that run through my head as I'm trying to build my lineups each week. And 
you know, it's a, it's a good problem to have. These are all very talented yeah. wideouts. So, uh, talk about wide receiver twos. What's uh, what's going on here in this tier? Yeah, so we're, we're starting to see just sort of some of these volume plays on offenses that aren't as great. But if we're talking about PPR, which you know generally these are all formatted to be regarding, you know, guys like Emmanuel Sanders, Cole Beasley, again teammates, they're just throwing the ball a ton. And those guys have had some really nice weeks with Josh Allen, and it doesn't appear that you know he has slowed down. Rumors of his demise were greatly exaggerated, as they say. Um, and then you know guys that we had seen in prior years do better, like Galladay or Robinson. They're on offenses that are struggling, but it's a volume play where you know Robinson is clearly the one, and then there's a two, and then a whole bunch of question marks in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Galladay is sort of the last man standing right now, um, and even he hasn't been seeing a as much time and attention as we thought maybe he would, but with the injuries they're having, it makes sense. Tim Patrick is interesting because it's the same sort of thing and you don't really think about it, but it's like Sutton Patrick and then Fant. The rest of those pass catchers are getting injured in the Broncos and Patrick has had nice week scoring. Renfro is a volume play. Same with Waddle mm-hmm. and then Fuller's the kind of guy that can just blow the top off at any time. Davis and Crowder, if Crowder is going to play as I hope he does is, He's a fan favorite in our household anyway. Again, target hogs. They're going to get the targeted even in a bad offense that in PPR can get you points. Boyd is one of those with Higgins. If uh, Higgins is healthy and playing this week where that's a high volume passing offense and it's a very good matchup this week. Ayuk started to show what we had hoped for him in the game against Green Bay. And, you know, he's sort of earned playing time with the team again, which is going to get you playing time in fantasy lineups. And Devonta Smith, you know, they, he keeps getting targets from Hertz. It isn't completely working out for him, but he's a guy that, you know, one big play can get you a wide receiver two weeks. So a lot of volume is what you're seeing in these PPR rankings for wide receiver two, because even if they're not going to get you multiple touchdowns, they're going to get targets and they're going to get catches. Well, yeah, as as we go through and we and we build the tiers and, and we, you know, uh, we look at, you know, our own rankings for the tiers. I feel like the wide receiver two and flex plays on any given week are the guys that could have a boom bust week. I mean, cause you look at the names, like you said, they're super talented guys. There's a lot of, a lot of opportunity, you know, in targets, but not always converting or not always having uh, the success that we would see. But, you know, when you look at the wide receiver two list, Allen Robinson feels like he needs to be because he's one of the best receivers in football. But then you look at that game plan against Cleveland, and you're like, I can't trust Allen Robinson as anything more than a two yeah. or, or less because who knows what they're going to do with him. I mean, I don't think he had a target until the second quarter, maybe. Like, he should be – him and David Montgomery is who your offense needs to run through, and they did none of that. I mean, the Montgomery got involved. didn't do anything, period. Right. So. You know, so – but then – I mean, Tim Patrick, with Judy out, Patrick is a great option because he produces, you know, and Cole, Ble- Cole Beasley, as many people aren't the biggest fan of him, guy gets a ton of targets and he gets a ton of catches. And in PPR formats, that's huge. You know, Corey Davis has a good relationship with his young quarterback, unfortunately is easily taken out of games because the team is young and growing. And, you know, Corey Davis in a year from now, maybe a guy that you think about as a wide receiver one on the regular because he has a relationship with his quarterback. He's very talented, but right now you can't trust it. I mean, the, the two category for me and the flex category for me could boom any given week. And it wouldn't surprise me. Like if we came back next week and somebody said, Jameson Crowder had a huge week, like, yep. Doesn't surprise me. He's that talented. And if he gets the ball in his hands, he can do a lot of great things with it. You know, Ayuk, Ayuk last year, very talented. We saw a lot out of him. Wouldn't surprise me if he had a big, so these wide receiver twos are are a group, a good group, solid group. Uh, I think, you know, for me, Manny Sanders and Renfro are the two on here. Where I'm like, eh, I don't know that I would trust them as a wide receiver too. Um, but that's just because I've, I've never been the hugest fan of either. But otherwise, I, I think it's a solid tier and, and it should help folks this week. What's uh, what's your take on the flex, the flex tier as we get closer to the sleepers? Yeah, I mean, this is just a mixed bag, which you're going to find in flex and with the sleepers. The two guys, um, sort of secondary, tertiary guys in Arizona, Kirk and Moore, 
they sort of alternate who's, who's going to have a big week. Yeah. And then you throw in someone like AJ green, which is a sleeper that can have a big week. We know, but Hopkins doesn't miss games. So he's going to be the main guy out there and he's just going to get the targets. That's why he's at the very top of the list. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course the running the ball, whether it's Edmonds or Kyler or Connor, that's going to eat up some of it. So the reflex play because they have a chance to explode for you, but they're just not guaranteed a whole lot. And I think that's sort of what you see out through this list. A lot of it is guys and not great situations for offenses. You see it with Chenault and Chark, who you know, the fantasy community was split on all year, but who's going to be the number one? And then Marvin Jones signs like, hey, it's me. Um, Jacoby, <laughs> yeah, Jacoby Myers is like just, just not a great offense, but he's the main wide receiver there, so he bears paying attention to. And he gets a ton of targets. I mean, he's he's averaging yeah. like eight or nine targets a game and converting, you know, most of them. I, mean, I think he had nine catches last week in, you know, a rough game against the Saints. You have three Browns here because, yeah, any of them could have a really nice game, but it's sort of right now Odell and then the tight ends. And of course, the running game is the big thing for them. So, like, do you really feel confident which one of them it's going to be any week? No. The, the biggest thing that I think was interesting to me is that both Van Jefferson and Robert Woods fell into here, where, you know, Woods just isn't getting the attention that he had in prior years so far from Matt Stafford, you know, they try to run the ball, you know, to maintain that balance a little bit. Uh, even last week against a team like Tampa, where you just don't have success running, um, they just blew up on offense and, you know, Sonny Michelle was able to find a little bit of room, but Woods wasn't getting any of it. I think it was Deshaun, Cooper Cup, Higby were the ones that had touchdowns. Yep. And, you know, Jefferson's getting targets where Woods just isn't being paid attention to. And I think he will have his weeks. I think things will even out as teams pay more attention to cup, but I don't see how you trust him as a wide receiver too at this point. And no. it's sort of the same thing with the Falcons with Zacchaeus that we talked about with the Browns. There just isn't enough being thrown his way for him to be more than that, that you can trust him in a given week. And uh, sort of the same thing with MVS. They'll take a couple shots with him down the field. And that's, you're hoping you connect with one of those. Cause you know, they're going to do it a few times a game, but if he doesn't, not, you're not going to be getting much out of them. So it's just a huge smorgasbord here of just different sort of situations. And s- some of these guys eat into each other. That's the last one I didn't mention. Well, two of them, the Raiders and the Eagles, you know, there's two guys from each of those teams here where you sort of, again, the second and tertiary receivers on the teams, just in terms of targets and what they're doing with those targets, where any one of them could have a really nice week. Any one of them could just disappear but they're having to throw the ball on those teams right now because of just either being behind like the Eagles have or lack of success running the ball like the Raiders. Absolutely. You know, and, and we were, uh, we were talking about it in the waiver chat, but I really feel like DPJ is going at some point to have just a boom game. So putting him as a flex play uh, is big because when Baker needs a completion or, or when he needs something big to happen, it looks like he's been targeting DPJ and, DPJ makes spectacular catches. Now he's not making Odell one-handed catches, but I mean he's making those catches where because he's such a tall receiver, he can stretch out and use that big wig span. I mean, there was one catch on the sideline where there was no way he should have came down in bounds. Yeah. Those two toes were in bounds and he came down with the ball. And it was it was it was amazing. So I expect him to have a big week. You know, Michael Pittman Jr., he's a guy I'm still putting in my starting lineups. Obviously, we have mirrors of flex because you know, when he gets the ball, man, he's just so good. And and I know Wentz is playing, you know, in a wheelchair at this point because them ankles are all beat up. But he's a guy that, you know, like like I mentioned in the wide receiver two category, you know, any of these guys could have just a massive week, and I wouldn't be surprised. Schwartz and Zacchaeus and Higgins and MBS and even probably Jefferson and Watkins are guys where I'm like, oh. Like, I don't see them having the potential for a big week as much as I see, you know, from – from Rager up or maybe even Myers up. Uh, but they all have tough matchups this week where it's just hard to trust them as anything more than a flex option. So uh, rounding this out, the sleeper tier is full of all sorts of interesting boom bust potential. You know, we've got rookie receivers all the way up to guys that people have, have ignored for years in the Devontae Parkers of the world. We have unknowns like Marquez Callaway and guys that were with the Saints in the back in the day like Kenny Stills and just a whole mixed bag of 
I don't know. You know, like these guys could produce well. Aguilar's had a nice week. You know, Elijah Moore, everybody loves him. Like, what are you doing with the sleeper tier? And do you feel really confident that any of these could be a flex or a wide receiver too by the end of week four? Mo, I mean, maybe half of them. I think probably could, you know, I mean, Gabriel Davis always has that potential. Um, Deshaun Jackson, again, he just needs one long ball. And he, I think two out of three games he's had that this year. Um, any of those guys, and that's kind of why they're all grouped together down here at the bottom on the Chiefs. Uh, Robinson, Hardman, and Pringle, you know, Every week, one of them's getting targets, and they have the potential to just go off for you. Cedric Wilson, we saw that yesterday. You know, the Eagles decided they were going to do their best to eliminate the wide receiver one, two, and Lamb and Cooper. So they threw the tight ends, and Wilson got attention. Um, if you started him, it, you know, a sleeper out of, or excuse me, a flex sleeper this week out of desperation or very deep league, you got rewarded for that. And Osborne, I think two out of three weeks, we've seen it with him. So, just some of these I think are more likely to hit than others. Callaway has not been what we thought he would be. I mean, that offense really just is not throwing the ball a whole lot for how much they've scored in two of their games. Um, the three guys for the Jets are just generally speaking a bucket of yuck based on what we know right now with that offense. Uh, I think any of them can have a fine week for you. Moore is probably the only one that I would really say has a wide receiver two potential or more. Uh, if we want to think about that offense improving. Um, and Terrace Marshall just isn't getting the attention so far this year. I mean, he's more of a, a stash at this point for the Panthers. Mm -hmm. But, Absolutely. yeah, I mean, there are a whole bunch of people that are on our lists that, I mean, you can scroll down there and see. There's other people that we discuss, you know, on here that don't make the list just based on situation or whatever or, you know, someone's injured. So, you know, there's a lot of people that we are considering on here. Mm -hmm. um, the one sort of that I would, you know, have up here somewhere if he is a wide receiver in your league is Cordero Patterson. I think he is better used in a running back slot uh, just because he's getting volume and there's more, there's a higher scarcity of running backs that have usefulness. So yeah. we do talk about a whole bunch of other people. These are just the ones in the sleepers that, you know, two out of the three or two out of the four of us thought, Hey, yeah, there there's a chance for something this week, maybe just whether it's based on volume yep. or hopefully they're getting the attention this week. Yeah. And a lot, and a lot of this tiers change if guys are healthy, man, look at the, look yeah. at the names you're not seeing up here. AJ Brown, Juju, Deontay Johnson. I mean, Jerry, Judy, obviously on IR, Landry, IR, Mike Thomas, IR, Gallup, IR. I mean, there's a lot of her guys. So that's why you're not seeing a lot of these names on here because I see you in the comments going, well, why isn't so-and-so on here? Well, if he's healthy, that dynamic changes. That's yeah. why you got to come back Sunday mornings and have the conversation with us in the, in the, in the boomer bust videos that we, that we do live stream. Uh, so that being said, if there's somebody you think we needed to put in here, tell us below why change our minds. We appreciate and love having the conversation with you guys in the chat. You see us respond as quickly as we can. We, we get down in there and we have that conversation. Um, I do want to thank you guys for hanging out with us as always. Uh, that is our tiers for week four. Check us out next week. We will get you your tiers for week five. And as always, like, subscribe, do all those things. And if you need us, our Twitter handles are below our names. And we'll talk to you again soon.